Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today, and for quite a few days into the future, I'm going to be doing some mining. Now, my friend has this property with underground tunnels that he's been digging out. It's called Sandland. If you have missed my previous videos on Sandland, I'll throw a link in the corner up here. And he has very generously allowed me to use a small part of his underground world to create something. So I'm going to be tunneling into the wall here, digging off to the side, and building an underground bar or speakeasy. This is something I've been interested in for a while. I think it'd be kind of cool. And that's going to be a project that I'm working on for a while. Now you might ask, how is this a Save It For Parts project? Well, I have a bunch of stuff at home that I've scavenged or salvaged or hoarded, and I can use that stuff to build a bar. I have some countertops, I have some signs, I have some interesting tables, I have all kinds of things that I can use to decorate a bar like this, but I can't really use them at home. So obviously, I'm going the easy route here and digging out an entire underground room just to house some of my hoarded stuff. I'm calling it a bar because that's kind of the closest analog, but it's not going to be anything that's open to the public. It's just going to be a cool spot to sit down and hang out. We'll be using this electric jackhammer to chisel out the Jordan sandstone. So I'm going to be starting by expanding this tunnel behind me, getting away from the donut room, which is where I'm currently standing. And then once I've got enough tunnel down that way, I'm going to start expanding out into a bar. Alrighty, let's get started. ready to go. Nice. The first Gabe Bar train. Yeah. So every now and then we hit these natural crevices in the sand. And this one goes way down there. It's not quite a natural cave, but uh, still interesting nonetheless. So here's my progress for about a single eight-hour day of work. When I started, the tunnel was up to about here. So I've dug another approximately five to six feet past that. So about one eight hour day gets you about five or six feet of tunnel. It was a little easier because this crack was here that made things softer along the way. So we've got about 20 feet to go until we can start actually digging the bar. So got quite a few more days of this. So I started this bar project while it was still summer. And it is not a fast project, so it's now winter. So again, it's definitely not quick, but we are making progress slowly and surely. We're back here once again at Sandland, and I am testing something new. In the past, you saw that I had to dig out my tunnel, and every bit of sand that I dug out, I had to move in a bucket to a cart, and then move the cart over to the train, and then winch it out. So I'm trying something that might eliminate a couple of those steps. So here's my digging face, and you'll notice I've got this pipe, which runs back through the tunnel and out towards the train. And I don't have quite enough pipe to get all the way out, but at the end, I have a powerful vacuum. Now my hope is that this vacuum will be able to suck the excavated sand out into it, and then I don't have very far to go to take it over to the train and dump it. We've got a light strip that's misbehaving over there, that's why there's a dance party going on. As to how long this will work before it gets clogged, I don't know. I might have to break up some of these larger pieces so they'll go down the vacuum. All right, I may have been a little too ambitious with my first run of pipe. 
uh, because it's either too long or too many bends or too many size changes because the sand just gets stuck in it along the way. So we've backed it off to the donut room. So now the vacuum sits in the donut room and we're just vacuuming out from our working drift in here. All right, slight update. The vacuum has stopped working. It is giving off a peculiar smell and I think we've lost all power. So I probably have blown a fuse out at the generator. I think we might have to write off this vacuum idea as a bad idea and go back to moving sand one little bucket at a time. Now you might notice that I'm wearing a little more safety equipment than normal. And that's because we're using a different tool to dig today. That's right. Today we're using a chainsaw. And it actually cuts through the sandstone like butter. So I did these cuts in like a few seconds. The chainsaw worked pretty well. I got all of this sand out. This is actually only about half the sand that I dug out with the chainsaw. And the only downside is it files the blade of the chainsaw smooth, so I can't even resharpen this because it's just, there's nothing there. The blade's also loosened up a bit, but that was after I was done digging with it, so I'm going to have to see if I can get a new blade cheaply and if it's economical to keep using the chainsaw in that way. Uh, the blade didn't break, which I'm surprised. I thought that chain was going to break from the stress of going through rock, but it did not. And we are now about six feet past the last survey marker. So at this point, I'm going to start curving to the right. And then once I've curved about 90 degrees, I will start building the bar. All right, so this is probably the fifth or sixth day we've been doing this. Um, not all in a row, obviously, but uh, on different weekends. I have killed that chainsaw, so I did burn out the motor on that, but it was free, so oh well, maybe I'll look for another one. It was pretty efficient for digging. Uh, it would be better for carving out uh, fine detail like uh, seats or a wall nook or an entrance or something else. So. Uh, for now, we're going to stick with those demolition hammers, and I actually have a new one that I'm trying out on this trip. Okay, so this is the Extreme Power US 66102, and it is a demolition hammer. It's on par with those Milwaukee's that we were using, but this one is only a third the price. This is around $100, and we're kind of testing it out to see not only does it compare in power and digging ability, but how long does it last? Uh, those Milwaukee's do tend to die every few months and we're wondering if these will die sooner or if they will end up being robust. Um, despite the name uh, Extreme Power US, it's obviously a Chinese tool and we don't really know much about the build quality or how long it's actually going to last. But so far it's being pretty efficient at digging. Now you may have noticed that we've done a couple modifications to these. I've got this screen over the air intake to try and keep the sand out of the motor. Uh, that's one of the things that kills tools under here is just sand in the motor. This is where the air comes out, so not as concerned about sand getting in there. It just blows out again. I've been limiting my duty cycle on this guy to about five minutes. And we've got a timer here, so I can set that to five minutes. And after that amount of time, the power shuts off, so I know not to run the tool too long. So in a full day, I have dug all of this sand, plus about 17 more of these carts, which I've already taken out. All right, we finally have the approach tunnel done. And so what I'm doing now is starting to open up a room for the start of my bar. Some people have asked about the geology of the sandstone and if there are different layers of minerals in here. Now mostly, 
we've just got sand, but there are some of these bands of more iron-rich sand, which have the orange stripes in them. And then got another area of all kinds of different iron oxides and whatnot. And then down here, we've actually got a little bit of clay, which is kind of this bluish stuff. So this is kind of a wet, sticky blue clay. If we scooped this out, we could probably make pottery out of it. We don't really have enough to go into industrial clay production, but it's uh, kind of cool to see it in the walls here. And this is all basically uh, sea bottom sediment from millions of years ago. It is now day 10, maybe? I've honestly lost track, but uh, we've got quite a bit of tunnel now. And I believe I showed last time that we had a tiny closet-sized opening. And now it's actually big enough to get a wagon in here. So I can start chipping away at the walls and dump the sand directly into the wagon rather than having to shovel it all up. Today we've got a new sand hauling wagon. Some assembly required. And here's our wagon in its new natural habitat, along with a bunch of its friends. Currently, it's approximately six foot by eight foot, and once it gets to about six by ten, we'll start carving out some uh, furnishings like bar benches, uh, countertops, maybe some booths, and some other sort of uh, seating arrangements. So hopefully, once we can start uh, congregating again and being together, with or without respirators, we can have a cool place to hang out underground. All right, we're approaching the end of phase one with this bar project, which I consider to be a basic bar with a countertop, decent sized little room, and it's a nice place to hang out. We will be expanding it past that, but for now, uh, phase one is where I'm gonna have a stopping point. We've spent approximately six months on this project, an average of about three days a month, uh, approximately 20 days altogether, and approximately eight hours per day. So I'm guesstimating I've spent about 160 hours. Uh, there's been an additional probably 100 hours of sand hauling by other people, and I really appreciate all the help that my friends have given me during this project. I also wanted to mention that I'm really happy with those weird knockoff cheapo drills. The Extreme Power US drill, or technically it's a demolition hammer, works incredibly well, I think. I probably put between 20 to 40 hours on each of the three tools that I bought, and I've had no mechanical failures. I've been using them in rotation. I use each one for about five to eight minutes, and then I set it aside, go to the next one, by the time I get back to the first one again, it's cooled off enough that I'm not worried about it uh, wearing out. So here's how I'm leveling out my bar surface. I've got a laser level at the uh, elevation that I want. And I'm taking a scraper and I'm basically just scraping the laser light off of here. So I scrape it down until the laser goes on the wall instead of the countertop. And then I know it's all the same level. All right, so there's our laser level, and here's our countertop, and you can see aside from a few little specks of sand still on the countertop, everything is perfectly level with that line. So that is a level countertop, and now I can put my slabs on top of it. All right, now that we've let everything sit for a while to let the airborne sand settle down, let's see what our bar looks like. If you want to dig your own underground room in sandstone, budget yourself a full day for each four to six feet of walking height passage, and then budget yourself another full day for approximately every foot of a six foot wide room. That's right, with just a few simple decorations, we've turned a hole into a home. Or at least a hole where you can, you know, hang out and drink, which is kind of home for a lot of people I know. Pretty pleased with how the bar came out, so this is just, uh, one big pillar or slab of sandstone with some uh, granite or fake granite or whatever this is. I found it on the side of the road, so I don't know what it is, but uh, it works pretty well. 
and gives me some space behind the bar tend. Now we are going to be expanding more tunnel in that direction, so we're going to push the bar out more, maybe make a T, have some more things over there. Um, over here by the trash, we're going to uh, carve this out and make kind of a booth area. Might do a few more of those along the tunnel as we extend it. All right, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Um, I've spent a lot of time just digging this space out, getting it ready, uh, getting the basics of a bar, and we're going to do some more videos as we decorate this. Uh, eventually we're going to have a train running around the room, we're going to have some other stuff in here, and like I said, we're going to have a bigger space. So stay tuned for that, uh, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, and you'll see all of our silly adventures in underground drinking establishments. Well that's all we've got for this one, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.